Hello everyone, I'm super excited to be with you with the new session of ANSYS Machine Master class. Today we are going to learn a very important skill, how to mesh complex geometries. In the world of modern CFT simulations, we don't just work with simple shapes, we simulate incredibly complex things. Think about modeling the blood flow inside the human vein, which we get from a medical CT scan. Or think about the airflow over the detailed surface of an airplane. These geometries are difficult, but very important. And today, we will focus on another complex example, the detailed geometry of a car. As you can see, our goal is to take this beautiful complex car and prepare it perfectly for simulation. To do this, we will learn three essential tools, pinch, the featuring, and virtual topology. After we quickly understand the basics from these slides, we will jump directly into ANSYS workspace and apply everything to this car geometry. Let's begin. So what happens when we try to mesh these complex geometries directly? We run into big problems. As you can see on this slide, we get very poor quality elements which give bad results. The meshing process takes an extremely long time. Often the CFD solver will fail because the mesh is too bad and we create unnecessary complexity, making our simulation slow and inefficient. But we are not a stock. We have a powerful toolkit in ANSYS meshing to solve these exact problems. Today, we will learn our three main tools. First, mesh the feature ink that you may remember from session three when we were talking about global sizing. Think of this tool as our automatic cleaner. Second, virtual topology. This is our smart surface combiner. And third, pinch control. This is our precision tool for removing gaps. Let's look at each one very quickly. I wanna start with the simplest one, the mesh the feature ink. The idea is very simple. It is automatic cleaner for your geometry. It finds and removes any feature like a small hole or a short edge that is smaller than a size that we specify. It works during the mesh generation, so it does not change your original CAD model. And best of all, there is no manual selection needed. It works automatically. The most important setting is the, the feature size that you can see on this panel. This is the rule for the cleaner. You tell it, anything smaller than this size gets removed. The default setting is very clever. It is based on your main element size, so it adapts automatically. Next, we have a more powerful and intelligent tool, Virtual Topology. The magic of this tool is that it lets you combine many small faces or edges into one big, clean one without changing your original CAD file. It is all virtual. As you can see, its main uses are merge faces and merge edges, making the geometry much simpler for the mesher. We can also use it to split large faces if we need more control. For example, on our car door, there might be 20 small faces from the design process. With virtual topology, we can tell ANSYS to treat them as one single large face. This helps us create a much cleaner and more organized mesh. And finally, we have our specialist tool for very specific problems, pinch control. Its main job is to remove tiny, narrow gaps or short edges that cause bad elements. It works with a simple idea of primary and secondary geometry. The blue primary geometry is the winner. It stays in place. The red secondary geometry is the loser. It gets pulled or snapped onto the primary. The most important rule here is the pinch tolerance. This number tells the software the maximum distance to search for things to pinch together. A very important rule to remember is that this tolerance should be smaller than your local mesh size. We can use an automatic pinch to let the software find problems and we can use manual pinch to select things ourselves for full control. Alright, that is all the theory we need for today, so it is time to see them in practice. Babel. As the first example, I want you to keep a close look on this model. This is something like the air path 
for the uh, respiratory system of a human. And uh, as you know, most of these geometries are gathered around from the CD scan photos. So uh, this is why we call them the surface body. You can see it's established from many uh, surface bodies attached together. And uh, in this complex geometries, what we need to uh, learn is the topic of the current session. We have introduced three different tools that can help us through this way. Uh, but uh, as you remember, uh, one of them, which was virtual topology, is applied on the geometry itself and the, the featuring and uh, the next one, the pinch control, uh, are our tools when it comes to meshing and for post-processing of the mesh. So uh, I should say that uh, among these three tools, what is more important to us is the virtual topology and the rest can be helpful in some cases or not. But uh, for all complex geometries, virtual topology is our key. Uh, so let's begin. The first thing that I want you to know is that uh, having the face selection tool, you can see by simply selecting these edges, I can have them uh, actually select it. But the point is that I want to define boundary conditions on all together. And more importantly, when it is about the mesh, uh, we know that uh, these complexities uh, somehow uh, make the measure difficult to produce good elements. Uh, and uh, to be honest, for many uh, different cases and models uh, that has complex geometries, uh, we confronted days and days waiting for the measure to produce the grid and um, no results. So this is why I'm saying it's not just about the quality of the grid. It's about generating a proper grid at once in the initial step, and then we can uh, enhance it. So uh, this is where the virtual topology tool comes in. To track this, you need to right-click on the model itself. As I said, it will apply it on the geometry model. And from the insert bar, you can find virtual topology. After selecting that, you would see a separate section beneath the materials in the tree outline called topo uh, virtual topology. And up here in your toolbar, you will have access to virtual to topology task. So from now on, what we have to do is to selecting one by one the faces that we want to attach together. But of course, there are some limitations to it. For example, what I'm going to do right now for these green areas is attaching them together and replacing a single solitary surface instead of these multiple ones. After selecting that, you would see the Merge Cells tool up here. So as I select it, you can see all converted into one and independent surface. And uh, this is the magic of virtual topology tool. But uh, if we want to continue to the other side of my uh, air pathway geometry, you can see that I can merge them together as well. But when it comes to two completely different uh, samples, you would see an error like this. This is all because of the surface normals that is too large with respect to average surface normal of the uh, selected set. Uh, so all I'm going to say is that you're not free to do it on all the faces together, but you can uh, attach multiple areas together and, and this somehow alleviate the problem for you. Uh, so let me continue that for these parts as well. You can see tiny cells that are really irritating when it comes to uh, CFD modeling. So these could be attached as well together, maybe these two. Yeah, I could replace these two together due to its uh, appropriate normal angle. And uh, you can continue the same path through your geometry for other section as well. So uh, this was the main way of using virtual topology. We will apply it on a car uh, CAD as well. But for now, I just want to generate a mesh with the default values. Do not forget to change the physics preference to CFD. So you already know that there will be extra options in the sizing setting. And uh, for now, the default value of mesh the featuring is set based on the element size, the global element size that we set in here. So let me generate the initial one to see what will happen.
I've been waiting for about 5 minutes, but it works it. You can see it successfully could create the geometry and mesh grid. So uh, as you zoom a little bit, you would see that uh, for all the regions regarding the curvature size and also the proximity that is not activated, uh, we could simply generate the uh, Vela structure grid, uh, regardless of its quality. Uh, what I want to mention is about these faces that you can see right now, uh, only on these uh, edges that we can see around and this surface. The measure was obliged to generate nodes on that. And uh, without uh, actually mentioning, you already know that the more edges that we have, the more cells and nodes that uh, the measure has to generate. So uh, this is the uh, main reason that we try to avoid uh, creating multiple edges. And you can see it just happens in all the edges of any of these face cells. So uh, I want to continue on the featuring size. Uh, it doesn't actually work on the current model. It doesn't need, but uh, what I want to mention is about this example that you can see right now. So what is apparent in this model is that uh, for the green one, we uh, actually decreased the, the featuring size uh, in our mm, settings. And the main point was that we wanted to capture all the details of this model. You can see the growth around the circular zone. And uh, when we increased the featuring size on the blue one in the middle, you can see the grooves are just disappeared. And this is somehow an automatic tool to uh, actually uh, avoid uh, capturing all the details of our model. So uh, we know that there might be a great and drastic decrease in the number of nodes, but it comes at a price and we just uh, missed some of the parts. So this is the general uh, application of the featuring size. And we learned it uh, about it in third session of our master class when we were talking about global mesh sizing. So let's check the next example. The next prepared example is this beautiful race car that you can see right now. Uh, what you have to bear in mind is that when you import the geometry from other CAD modelers such as SOLIDWORKS or CADIA, you would see something like this. Uh, this is pretty common and um, the ANSYS CAD modeler cannot detect or better to say attach all the faces together. And this is uh, the source of all the issues that we will confront during assimilation. But uh, don't forget that we have the powerful virtual topology and from now on on any complex geometry we are able to insert it so one more time i want to show you how it can help us in this uh, cat model for example i want to start from this region uh, because i know that these uh, may have some uh, very similar normal angle and this gives us the chance to put just a single surface instead of these uh, I guess 10 faces together so very simple you can see it has just turned and converted into an individual plane uh, you can do it and modify the whole geometry regarding this task and uh, this tool uh, provides you uh, this great power uh, the next thing that I want to do is about the pinch control that you can find uh, you can find if you right click and follow insert. So we covered almost all of these uh, important tools, but not the pinch control. So pinch is just applied on the mesh, not the geometry. And this is why prior to working on this, I need to generate the initial grid regarding the default values. Here we go with the generated grid, and uh, as you can see, it could perfectly generate a proper grid uh, using tetrahedral elements. So uh, we want to focus on the pinch control. As you can see, for example, on the spoiler of this car, 
uh, we have a very thin region that uh, made the solver to uh, generate multiple faces and edges for the grid. And maybe by just uh, uh, removing this part of our spoiler, we can decrease the number of elements. Well, uh, in other words, what I'm trying to say is that this might be an extra edge for us. So uh, inserting a pinch here could be uh, applicable. The first and the primary geometry that could be a vertex or edge uh, needs to be selected. For example, I want to keep this edge as here. And then for the secondary geometry, the edge on the other side, I just want to move it to the other one. And uh, as always, it asks for the tolerance that we introduce in our slides. So regarding the ruler that we have down here, I guess uh, the tolerance of about maybe five millimeters would be perfect. So let's see how it affects the final grid. So here is the result. You can see that it has just turned into one very sharp thin area. Uh, the point is that uh, we can see the whole geometry, but when it comes to the mesh grid, as we talked about it, it has just turned into one thin edge and this is the application of the pinch control when you want to modify your geometry but you don't have access to the CAD model itself or you just want to simply follow this modification in ANSYS smashing. But what is very more important is about the automatic way of uh, using pinch control. So right now we cannot find all the issues of these uh, extra edges of this model because it is very extended and big and we cannot just look up every details of that, uh, especially when we generated the grid. So you have another important option that you can follow by right clicking on mesh and you can see the create pinch controls after selecting that it takes a while for the solver to detect and recognize all the pinches that might be applied on the geometry so here is for example the first one and in total for the current model we have 57 pinches in uh, actually investigated so uh Let's see what it just happened. So I just want to turn my uh, wheel into a wireframe. And right now it shows here. So it has just detected these two edges that could be combined. And uh, it just decreased the uh, computational load and also number of elements. And similarly, we can see that for other edges like here. Right now it has just colored in red and blue and you can uh, recognize them so after defining so you can simply press the generate button one more time for the solver to generate the final grid and in this way the pinch can be a very powerful tool for complex geometries